Welcome to Mastering Solutions. We're going to go through this impulse and momentum problem. And they say that they want us to use the impulse momentum theorem to find out how long the stone is falling. So let's just go ahead and write what the impulse momentum theorem is. So J for impulse is equal to the change in momentum, delta P, which is also equal to P final minus P initial, which of course is just breaking up delta P. So now we can go even further. So we know that delta P or the P final minus P initial is the same as writing MV final for P final minus MV initial for P initial is equal to, now we're throwing back some old chapter stuff here, negative MG delta T since it's going in the negative y direction. So they want us to find what the change in time is to go from the initial velocity of 5.5 meters per second to the final velocity of 10.4 meters per second. So we need to isolate delta t. So let's move mass over. So negative mass gets divided out. And so you need to be a little careful here because we're dividing by a negative mass. So when we do that, what we're gonna have is negative m divided by negative m and a negative m divided by a negative m. So this whole thing right here is going to turn into a positive and this whole unit right here is going to turn into a negative. So the masses will cancel and then what we're left with is a positive initial velocity minus the negative final velocity. So they flip because we're dividing by this negative mass. And all of that is equal to G delta T. And so if we isolate delta T, that goes away. And we're left with the change in time is going to be equal to the initial velocity minus the final velocity all divided by gravity. So now we know that gravity, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. And one mistake that you might make when you do this problem is that they tell you that the speed initially is 5.5 and 10.4. And so you could plug that in, but you would get the wrong answer because we're looking at it from the y axis right here. So it's going to be negative. So this initial velocity is actually a negative 5.5 meters per second and a negative 10.4 meters per second because we're going in the negative y direction like we talked about. So when we plug that in, we have a negative 5.5 meters per second minus a negative 10.4 meters per second. And then we'll divide that whole thing by 9.8 meters per second squared. So now the meters per second will cancel out and we'll be left with one extra time. So we have the correct unit. So we'll be left with seconds and pulling up our calculator here, we are going to have a negative 5.5 minus a negative 10.4. Let's put in a parenthesis there. There we go. And then we'll divide all of that by 9.8 meters per second squared. So we'll be left with 0 0.5 or a half of a second for it to go from this initial velocity to the final velocity.